So today's video was meant to be day one coverage of ASRock and Intel and the motherboards for the upcoming desktop chips at Arrow Lake. The problem was on day one, I was uh, running around all of Nangang Exhibition Center in Taipei here, trying to get more info on Arrow Lake. And then the keynote came out from Intel and there really wasn't anything specific about Arrow Lake. So here I am on the final day of Computex with still very little information about this chipset and this architecture that's coming out for the end user. However, I have asked around and the details that I know so far is it's going to be a socket 1851 replacing the socket LGA 1700. Arrow Lake is going to be the consumer CPU architecture that's replacing say the i9 14900K now this architecture will, from what I hear, have 27% better power efficiency. So in other words, Intel is finally going to use a new node, which is so important, but also they are going to be revamping the architecture and changing it significantly, meaning that we're going to get a tick and a tock all in one from Intel, which I'm sure a lot of enthusiasts are excited about. However, there is still, again, not really much official information out there on what's coming out for the consumers. And so when we look at the IPC, there was Lunar Lake, which was announced, and they went over the details there. And you can expect the IPC to be anywhere from 10 to 20% on these new cores. But also one of the most interesting design changes is that Intel is going to go away with hyper-threading completely from what I hear, meaning they're scrapping it. And so splitting a P-core into two threads is essentially not going to be happening on the new Arrow Lake CPUs. Instead, you're going to have the E-cores getting massive amounts of IPC gain, and they're gonna be taking the brunt off the P-cores when there's a max theoretical load in place. And so because they're gaining so much efficiency and so much uh, performance, they're able to do this. And with that, dedicate more max single thread instruction performance for the P-cores. Though from what I'm being told around the showroom floor here from different people, is that it's going to possibly be released in October, so quarter four, 2024. Anyhow, I do apologize for my voice. Uh, lots of talking, but I've also, looks like I've got some sort of sickness while I'm in Taiwan. So I do apologize in advance for my voice. And we've got the video uh, essentially showcasing the ASRock boards that are going to be released for Arrow Lake. So let's get right into that video. Here at Tech Yes City, we always like the budget. And that's what we're gonna start off this motherboard tour with. And we're starting with the Pro A Wi-Fi from ASRock. Now this is their most inexpensive model coming in currently for Arrow Lake support. And with this, you are going to get a 20 phase VRM. So that means that you'll be still able to run the highest end CPUs on a motherboard like this. Now above that is the Pro RS. And what we're looking at here is the same power stage structure, but also a beefier heatsink as well as a different aesthetic. And that's where things change a little bit for ASRock's generally one of their most popular models, and that is the Steel Legend. Now this comes with Wi-Fi 7, as well as a beefed up VRM, not just with a couple more power phases, but also beefier MOSFETs on those phases. And now moving down to the next layer of motherboards here, we've got the Lightning Wi-Fi. And this here is the same as the Steel Legend, as well as the motherboard above that, the Riptide. These are going to be two motherboards with just different aesthetics but the same spec layout as the Steel Legend. Now, one thing to look at with these motherboards, all the new ASRock Arrow Lake supported motherboards will come with Type-C USB Thunderbolt support at the back of the boards. So you don't have to worry about buying an ASRock board and not being able to utilize Thunderbolt because they've all got it built in, even the budget Pro-A Wi-Fi boards. Now above that is the Nova Wi-Fi. This is where the Nova just like the previous boards that were released on say the Z790 series, the Nova's a bit more beefed up. So here we've got a 25 uh, phase power design with 110 amp MOSFETs that are going to be even bigger than that of the 80 amps used on the Steel Legend, for example. But also this means that you're gonna be able to grab the top end i9. And if you've got air or water cooling, this thing will handle it absolutely no problem. So if you wanna, utilize that 27% power efficiency gain and just go through the roof with the newer Core Ultras, you're gonna be able to do that with the Nova Wi-Fi, just like you were able to do that 
with the previous generation Z790 uh, Nova and save quite a bit of money versus say the top end boards. Now above that is the Tai Chi. And I'm told this is, this time around, they're going with a different structure. They've got the Tai Chi and the Tai Chi Lite. Now the Tai Chi just has a few more heat sinks versus the Tai Chi Lite. But we've also got that similar power phase structure to the Nova Wi-Fi. Now I was told when they were making the motherboard and due to the layout, they actually couldn't put these uh, power buttons and reset and debugs down the bottom of the board. They had, the only spot they could fit them was up the top here. So unfortunately they had to go up there. So I personally wouldn't want these features missing. I'd rather have them at the top than not have them at all. Though in recent years with ASRock, they've known that people like the Tai Chi, but they don't like the price sometimes. And that's where they've got the Tai Chi Lite, which essentially is exactly like the Tai Chi in forms of its base structure, but it's got less heat sinks and less flare as well as no M.2 expansion. So it's gonna be pretty much similar to that of the Nova Wi-Fi, just in that Tai Chi aesthetic. And even without the M.2 expansion, you still have room for six M.2 drives. Though here's where things get really different for the Arrow Lake chipset. And this is with this GDR5 memory right here. This is a new type of uh, format and it's only coming on the Tai Chi OCF Cam 2 model. And that's exactly what this memory is, Cam 2. Essentially bolts into the memory and because it's got then shorter traces, it's designed for more extreme overclocking. So when the extreme overclockers start uh, getting their benchmarks ready, you'll see this right here start to get utilized a lot more. And so if you're into getting the most gaming FPS as well, I could imagine there's gonna be some people out there that wanna do this, they'll probably get this model with this, what's going to likely be very expensive memory modules. Though one thing to mention with the overclocked formula motherboard, this is the Tai Chi version of it, you got 27 power phases, so you do have an extra two power phases over the original Tai Chi formula. And then above that, you've just got the Tai Chi OC formula itself, and this is coming in with the same structure, just with the two slots of memory versus the CAM2 module that you saw below that. Now, up the top here, we've got a very different beast altogether. This is the final motherboard to go over with ASRock, and this is the Tai Chi Aqua. Now, what we're looking at here is going away from that water block on the CPU slot itself, because ASRock got a lot of complaints that people just wanted to use either all-in-ones or their own cooling solution, even air cooling, and they just love the look of the Aqua. So what they've done here is they've just made it so that the M.2 slot as well as the top heatsink on the VRM can have the option for custom water cooling because that's always a very difficult thing to do. And here we've got on the back of the motherboard, now support for all USB type C. That's right, there's no type A on the back of this board anymore. It's just all type C ports. So that was a bit of a funny design. I personally think maybe it's good to have two type A's just to plug your mouse and keyboard into, but Having all of them there, well, as Rock said, they're gonna give you an add-in USB 2 connector down the bottom, which will allow you to get an extra few type A ports. But speaking of the VRM, the Aqua just takes things to a completely ridiculous level where you got 33 power phases and 110 amp MOSFETs. And that's just simply overkill. There's only one way to describe that. I don't think anyone who's gonna be putting a CPU in and not overclocking is gonna be buying this motherboard. It's just a waste of money at that stage. Also, the Aqua is the only model motherboard to feature a 10 gigabit onboard NIC. And then below that, all these motherboards on the left-hand side have five gig NICs. And then to the right, they've all got 2.5 gig NICs. And on the base entry models, they even have 2.5 gig NICs included too. And that about wraps it up for Intel's new Arrow Lake CPUs and motherboards. There's definitely a lot more to be revealed there as the Intel keynote itself was definitely lacking, but I think all the keynotes from all the major three have been lacking at Computex 2024 this year. And the last thing to go over, however, from ASRock themselves, they're doing a great job on those motherboard aesthetics, designs, but the last thing here is if you've got an Intel Arc GPU, ASRock recently added support for those GPUs into their AI quick set feature set so you can get an Intel Arc GPU and enjoy the benefits of basic AI functionality without having to go through all the hurdles and loops in order to install those programs and get them working properly. If you want to find out more about uh, QuickSet itself, I did a dedicated video on it. I'll put the link up here so you can check it out. 
And with that aside, guys, hope you enjoyed the Intel coverage here at the ASRock booth. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and also let us know in the comment section below, are you looking forward to Arrow Lake? If so, why? If not, why not? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.